group of us students set out to design and build the home of the future, I had to ask myself a seemingly simple question. What is home? I think that home is the foundation of our beliefs and values, that our earliest notions of how the world works are shaped and formed by the first worlds we know, the crib, the dining table, the front yard. In my search, I've been able to trace back nearly all of my values to experiences at home, like the importance of family, discipline, and creativity. <laughs> But just as, the world, just as home opens up our world, it also obscures it from view. One thing I never learned to value was energy. I never knew how we got electricity, what wires and pipes ran behind plaster walls. I left sinks running because I liked the sound of flowing water. <laughs> Every time I turned on a light switch as a kid, it was an act of biblical proportions. And in all due respect to the creator, I often left them on. <laughs> and when I stopped believing in a higher power, I left the television on at night because sometimes that was the only company I had. Energy was free and unlimited, or so they say, ignorance was bliss. I'm fortunate to have been graced with the value of education, and to have worked hard enough to be at a place like Stanford, where now I understand how energy is tied to our environment, and how we're depleting our planet of the kinds that cannot be renewed, and how homes account for almost a quarter of the U.S.'s energy consumption, and our responsibility is as designers and engineers to switch to sustainable sources of energy, so we don't take any from our future kids. I think we should be designing homes that not only consume as little energy as possible, but produce all the energy they need. Today, we call that net zero, and at Stanford, we decided we'd try to build one ourselves. The opportunity came in the form of the Solar Decathlon, which is an international competition sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy. Every two years, they ask 20 collegiate teams to design and build solar-powered homes that are affordable, attractive, and easy to live in. This is the first time that Stanford's ever participated, and we took that as an opportunity to take 100 students and work on a complex, real-life, interdisciplinary project, because as great as new forms of learning like online education are, there's nothing quite like just getting outside and trying to build a house. And from the very start, we decided our goal wasn't to win the competition. It was to come up with an idea that could actually spark change in industry. Now, here's a problem. The residential home building industry is one of the slowest innovating industries in the country. That's because you have thousands of builders, each with a different notion of how to build the same thing, and municipalities with different standards for the same thing, such that when we go and try to build the same energy-efficient house, it's like starting from scratch every single time. Meanwhile, we're producing cars that are more energy-efficient every single year. So we thought back to the days of Henry Ford and the Model T, and we asked ourselves, What if we built homes like cars in factories, where we can guarantee the level of quality we need in today's high-performance homes, and ship them to their final location to save time, energy, cost on site? Then people said, no, that's not what we want. We don't want these mobile track homes coming out of factories. We want customized homes that are unique and spacious, and comfortable, not ugly. So we said, okay, if we were to build homes in factories, we wouldn't want to dictate what they looked like or how they were lived in, but we would want to dictate how they perform. Back when the Model T first came out, it was really just an engine and chassis. So Ford was really just providing horsepower, but he offered customizable shells for different consumer needs. So we thought, if we produce and design an engine for a home with a standard modular framework, then could we not only provide house power, but also the freedom to build any kind of house you want around it? <laughs> so here's how we think it would work. Let's say this becomes a company, which is not saying much at Stanford. The company produces these cores, which are essentially modules that contain a kitchen counter, a bathroom or two, a laundry closet, and a mechanical space in a variety of configurations. And let's say we've developed these cores to be customizable and affordable using assembly line techniques of fabrication. You want to build a green home for your family, so you go onto our website, you size a core for your needs, and then like Amazon, it's shipped to your home's location, at which point you can design and build any kind of home you want around it. The core distributes electricity, air, and water into, efficiently into each living space, kind of like your own energy management center. It provides intelligence for various sensors and controls, like lights and switches, and it integrates seamlessly into any climate, architecture, or lifestyle. Simply put, it's the muscle, brain, and heart of every new net zero home. We wanted to prototype this concept, so for our solar decathlon entry, we designed one example of a home around the core using the Palo Alto climate. And After about a year of design, we finally got it started with construction of a spring break. And I got to be honest, almost none of us had any construction experience, so we had <laughs> no idea what we were doing, but we just sort of made it up as we went along. For example, 
instead of using blueprints, we just used laptops and smartphones on the construction site and looked at a virtual model of exactly what we were building. After about two months of construction, that's where we are now, and students have been involved in the whole process, we'll be done by summer, and at which point we'll take the house, we'll split it apart into modules that fit on trucks, and we'll ship it down to Irvine, California for the competition. Actually, a couple months ago, we were really fortunate to find a permanent place for the house, back here on Stanford campus at the Jasper Ridge Nature Preserve, where it will become the home of the resident ranger and his wife and daughter. I remember thinking at that point, for the first time, finally, we were going to actually affect people's lives. And then I thought about that girl. I thought about her growing up in the home we designed for her. I thought about her playing with the faucets and turning the lights on. And I realized we were doing it all wrong. We were taking the typical Silicon Valley approach of using hidden technology in the background to make what was happening in the foreground as easy and efficient as possible. But we were missing the point entirely if the people living in these homes remained ignorant of their energy usage. Our goal was smart homes instead of smart people. So we changed our approach, we went back to the drawing board, and we switched from automation to agency. What happens when you design for automation? You get a sustainable building. You improve the energy efficiency of a couple thousand square feet. But what happens if you design for agency? You get sustainable people. They learn to take responsibility for their own energy decisions, and they reap their own rewards. They take sustainable habits like recycling and water conservation, and they take them to their friends' homes, to the school, to the workplace. They inspire others to share the same values. You get a sustainable community. So we redesigned the core to not just power the house, but to empower people, to take charge of their causal role in the energy narrative. The first thing we did was try to create a new kind of window into residential energy usage. An electric bill at the end of the month is too far removed from the day-to-day -day decisions that actually affect usage, and a kilowatt hour means very little to the average homeowner. So we knew we had to create some kind of feedback that was more frequent, salient, and meaningful. And the core is perfect for that because we can embed sensors in a database to record electricity and water usage day by day from day one of living in the home. One of our biggest projects is the, in the house is the web app that controls it. And it's all about taking data which is typically invisible to the homeowner, turning it into a powerful tool for goal setting and personal improvement. <coughs> Imagine you can see your daily energy usage, swipe backwards to see past performance, swipe forwards to see uh, your trends projected into the future. So by changing where you want to be next month, you can see exactly what you should do to change that tomorrow. We're still prototyping many new ways of visualizing energy, for example, uh, displaying each energy event as bubbles or ripples on a permanent timeline, kind of like your core's unique DNA, um, to remind people that it's all about causality and taking the traditional linear graph of energy and twisting it onto itself to become more like a clock to emphasize that energy is cycle and that uh, behavior trends and that each hour of every day can be overlaid on all previous days as a point of comparison so that your greatest competition becomes yourself. With this core, we're finally able to deliver the kind of ubiquitous eco-feedback that allows people to value their energy footprint as part of their identity, not just data mapping, but something like data portraiture. In fact, we re-examined all the points in the home at which the user makes energy-related decisions, and we asked ourselves, how do we redesign these interaction points to nudge people towards more efficient behavior while also maintaining agency? Take the light switch, for example. We could have designed an occupancy sensor to completely automate the usage of lights, but we saw this as a critical opportunity to increase awareness about electricity use. So we're designing a gesture-based surface on which you can also turn on and off the outlets in the room, and we embedded a color feedback mechanism that communicates the real-time power draw of the room, and users can see the immediate impact from turning lights off when they leave the room and feel satisfied about it instead of forgetting about it. Again, it's not the typical Silicon Valley approach, but it's what we call a more human-centered approach, which means we're giving people the tools to become architects of their own happiness. Winston Churchill said it best, we shape our buildings, and afterwards, our buildings shape us. It took us over a year to figure that out, but as a future architect, it's a lesson I'll never forget. I hope that my generation will be the one to finally say that the ignorance stops here and that it's time to change our cultures and values around energy. And if we can push this core to market, I think we can do it from the comfort of our own homes. Thank you. <laughs>